Hey friends, welcome uh, again. Thank you for joining us as we're going to continue this series that we've been going through on becoming the church. Uh, we've now uh, talked through four different uh, ideas and concepts through the book of Acts and what it means to become the church. And this will be our fifth time now. And so we're going we're gonna to start in Acts chapter 10. So turn or tap with me. If you would, to Acts chapter 10, we're going to go all the way to verse 44. It's towards the end there. Um, before we jump in, I just want to talk about how I think it's so amazing that we live in a world today where this text from a few thousand years ago can be completely and utterly relevant to what we're in right now. Um, it, it blows my mind that something... That, that was written, that was spoken, that was lived so long ago uh, has, has complete and utter relevance to what, what I'm living right now, February 21st of 2019. So let's just jump right into the text and, and then we can dive in a little bit more with what I mean by that. So Acts chapter 10 verse 44, I'm going to be reading from the ESV. It, sa it says this, while Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all all who heard the word. It's interesting because um, or if you go back and you read through what, what's, being, what's happening here is Peter is preaching to, to Christians, Jews, and Gentiles. And all people are hearing this. And it says that the Holy Spirit fell on all of them. Jews, Gentiles, and Christians alike. And the believers that were circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling the word of God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have just received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. I think it's so interesting because we read here that the Gentiles were filled with the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't the Gentiles who were amazed by this, but the circumcised people, the Christians, the Jews here that witnessed it were the ones who were amazed. And again, like I was saying earlier, the reason that I think that this text is so modern and relevant to us today is for a few reasons, but let me tell you a story, and it's, a, it's about myself. I need to apologize maybe to that man uh, in this story that I'm going to tell. I'm sorry that I didn't reach out to you and talk. But so... A few years ago, I worked for an organization called Gap Ministries, and it was a Christian foster care organization. And, and one of the responsibilities that I had was going to the courthouse with these, these kids who were in their current court cases with their parents or guardians. And so um, I was there probably about 11 or 12 in the afternoon with a student, um, and and I was joking around with them and having fun and, and telling them, hey, you know, it's going to be all right. You're going to do great. And, and just kind of hoping to, to relieve the situation of any stress. And that's when he walked in, this big, burly man. And, and he, he was tatted up. He had sleeves on both the right and left arms. Uh, he had a few, uh, like, jewelry wristbands and, and big, thick rings. Uh, he had glasses that he had pushed up into his hair. Um, and he was wearing a leather patch. And if you don't know what that is, um, some biker gangs have you wear a, a leather vest. And then it, on the front and the back, it, it's patched with the logo, with the words, um, with kind of the slogans of this biker gang. And so I see this big burly man who's tatted up wearing a, a motorcycle patch a walk in. I mean the presence of the room kind of changed. You could tell he was an intimidating person. And I witnessed him go up to this young man who was silent, hands in his pocket, sitting down. And when he turned and saw the biker, he lit up because he knew him and he was excited and they, they began to have some conversations. And so while I spoke with my student, 
I, I watch this. And I began to judge this person. And I assumed that this biker was like the father or the guardian in this situation where, where he was there fighting for the custody of his son but I, I scoffed because I go he's a he's in a motorcycle gang he's tatted up I bet you he was out late drinking last night with his buddies and my student he he went into the courtroom and I waited out in the hall and I scrolled on my phone and continued to watch this interaction and see what was super interesting was there was a moment in time right before that young man went into the courtroom and the the biker reached out and began to pray with this boy. And then they went into the courtroom together. And, and I s sat there, my jaw probably on the floor, after I witnessed this big, burly biker, who I assumed was the parent fighting for custody, sit there and pray with this boy. I later went home and did a little bit of research and I found out because I saw the patch and I kind of put two and two together. I found out that this biker was a part of an organization called BACA or Bikers Against Child Abuse. And they'll go and they'll come with, with a student or a child and they'll, they'll be with them throughout the duration of their, um, their trials and all of their, their court cases. And they're there not necessarily to intimidate the other parties, but to give strength to the person and the child who is going through these trials. And I was blown away that this burly, tatted up biker man was a Christian. That he took moments outside of his time to pray with the kid. The funny thing is I worked for a Christian organization and before my student went in to his uh, courtroom, I didn't even think to pray. And I was ashamed. And I began to wonder how many people have never had an opportunity to experience the love of Christ or experience who Christ is because we, the Christians, the church neglect to reach out to those who might be a little different. The modern Gentiles in our age, non-Christian people, how many people do we just scoff, look past, ignore, because they look a little different or they act a little different? How many people have yet to hear the words of Christ Jesus because we won't share it with them. The reason why at the beginning of the story I asked for forgiveness was because I hope that one day I can encounter that man again so that I can reach out and say that I love him. I appreciate him. I'm thankful for him. But I'm challenged as a pastor, as a still young man, How many people have I neglected to reach out to because of how they looked or how they acted? So I challenge you, church. When we go through our lives, when we continue to live as Christians, become the church. And what that means is that you might reach out to those who might not fit our mold. And you might love them and share the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth with them because they deserve it. The Holy Spirit might fall on them like it did the Gentiles so many thousands of years ago. You see, this Christian life is for everyone not just those who fit into our molds and not just those who make us comfortable. So won't you step out in faith? Won't you join me in becoming the body of Christ, becoming the church so that we can change this world for the better? 
through the name of Jesus Christ. Pray with me. Lord God, convict us. Soften our hearts. May we come across those who have not yet heard the word, who have not yet heard the name of Jesus. And might we share it with love and compassion and grace and mercy, even to those who don't look like us, who don't act like us, and who we might discredit even before we get to know them. God, thank you for your grace and your mercy that you continue to pour out on myself, on our churches, on each and every person in this world. Continue to let me have grace to give to others and continue to let me love like you loved me. Amen. Thanks, guys, for joining us. I hope that you've learned something on what it means to become the church. Now go and be the church.